Thank you for joining us for this NASA Town Hall. I am NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. We are here to discuss the exciting announcement NASA leadership made this morning. The changes announced this morning for NASA's human spaceflight programs will set the agency up for the next 20 years. On behalf of the astronaut office, we are excited to join you in this announcement. For me personally, this is a huge indication of the progress that we've made, not only with increased operations in low Earth orbit, but the development of our missions to the moon under the Artemis program. Now, I know we're all excited to hear guidance from our leadership. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. Good afternoon. NASA turned science fiction into science fact. In science, in math, and technology. And thank you for your part of all of this accomplishment and what we endeavor to do as part of the NASA family. Adventurers and explorers reach the heavens. Scientists, mathematicians, and technicians make a breakthrough discovery and discoveries and technological advancements. The NASA family helps humanity every day. In 2010, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson and I, along with the Obama-Biden White House, we chartered a new path for NASA. It was a dual track approach. NASA would buy services in low Earth orbit from commercial companies and set NASA's eyes on exploration farther out into the cosmos. And since then, we've seen unprecedented investment in the low Earth orbit economy. A decade ago, the commercial crew and cargo programs seemed so far off, but the proof's in the pudding. Just last week, we saw the launch of the first all-private mission to space, and not to mention the incredible achievements that teams across NASA have made on our exploration plans, on SLS, Orion, and the exploration systems. Artemis One is nearly ready for launch. Teams have been working overtime at Kennedy to ensure that mission success. And all this growth has led our human operations and exploration mission directorate to grow substantially. Our human spaceflight programs in low Earth orbit and development programs for deep space exploration, all of this counts for nearly half of NASA's entire budget. And so we've gathered here today to announce a modification. Going forward, we will reorganize the agency's human spaceflight programs into two separate mission directorates. Effective immediately, we are working to create the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate. I'll shorten that Exploration Missions Directorate and the Space Operations mission director. Space ops will carry out space exploration, research technology, demonstrations of that technology, space economy development, and international cooperation. Exploration systems development will focus on what comes next. Both Mission directorates are engineering the future of our moon to Mars exploration approach from different ends of the spaceflight continuum. This reorganization is about the future of space exploration. It's about setting up NASA for success. Creating two separate mission directorates ensures these critical areas have focused oversight. Both teams will support and execute for mission success. 
and I have great confidence in Kathy Leaders and Jim Free. They are the right people to lead these new mission directorates. But today is more than an organizational change. It's setting the stage for the next 20 years. It's defining NASA's future in a growing space economy. It's maintaining leadership in space that it's a top priority for our agency and indeed for our country. This is how we lead. We evolve by how we work. We carry out our missions here on Earth in low Earth orbit, at the moon, at Mars, and beyond. Today, NASA is the world's premier space agency. There's no doubt about it. Let us strengthen it. Let us ensure the next generation of trailblazers and pioneers inherit this agency with brimming optimism. The future is there. It's for us to grasp onward and upward. And I thank you for joining us in this town hall meeting. I want to hand it over to a great deputy administrator, Shuttle Commander Pam Melroy. Thank you, sir. I want to underscore that this decision reflection of the incredible impact the NASA workforce has had over the past decade, as the administrator described. NASA has been wildly successful in stimulating a commercial space economy, and much like a company that's growing in budget, scope, and vision, we must adapt and restructure to facilitate and accommodate that growth. For decades, NASA had one human spaceflight program, the Space Shuttle. And we had two, we built the space station and handed over to that. Now we're developing a train of technological innovation that stretches all the way to Mars. We already have multiple projects underway that support Artemis, SLS, Orion, EGS, Gateway, Next Generation Suits, and then the Human Lander System. And coming, we have more programs leading to a sustained presence on the moon and Mars that will require development. The Exploration Systems Development Directorate will own that architecture for moon to Mars and be responsible for the systems development portion of each capability of that architecture. Space operations will focus on the safe operation of our current LEO systems and future systems as they complete developmental test and evaluation. That includes completing commercial crew certification, the commercialization of LEO, supporting the eventual commercial follow-on to ISS, and of course, supporting exploration operations. The restructuring of NASA's Human Exploration and Operations Mission Directorate will help us safely and effectively manage this growth in scope. We have the opportunity to better align our organization structure with increasing activities in LEO and with our developmental exploration architecture and ensure the workforce has a focused oversight team in place to execute for mission success. NASA has a history of setting ambitious goals and then accomplishing them, reflecting our nation's commitment to discovery and innovation. Putting humans on Mars for scientific exploration is that next big goal. This decision and reorganization will set us up for the next 20 years and beyond. In the past decade, we've seen what happens when NASA sets the vision for the future. We get incredible innovation incredible gains for our nation's economy, and incredible success. This is what the future will look like. Commercial space stations in low Earth orbit, 
building on the world-class research and development legacy of the ISS. A sustainable infrastructure around and on the moon where astronauts will carry out groundbreaking science that will enable us to live and work on another celestial body. Next generation suits, communications, power systems, a moon base camp, lunar rovers, and ultimately humans on a transport vehicle to Mars where we can replicate those lunar capabilities for science. Humans will study the history of the red planet and take that next giant leap in uncovering the mysteries of the universe and our place within it. I wanna thank you all for your incredible work here at NASA. And now we take the next step to set ourselves up for success over the next two decades. I know you'll all have a lot of questions about what this means for you, but now I'd like to hand it over to our wonderful Associate Administrator, Bob Banna. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. And uh, first off, I just gotta say how honored I am to be part of this amazing team. You know, uh, I'm the of the work our human exploration team continues to deliver every day. From groundbreaking research aboard the International Space Station to test flights and crew rotation missions with the commercial crew program, as well as the stacking and verification of the Artemis I systems in the vehicle assembly building. I don't know how many of you saw that on the test Sunday. It was absolutely amazing on the core stage. The next time those umbilicals release, and I can't wait to see it, it's going to be on the maiden voyage of SLS on Artemis I. And how about all the development of the new systems that will help us sustainably return to the moon? Your commitment to our nation's space program is inspiring generations of future explorers. The changes that Pam outlined will allow us increased focus on our moon to Mars exploration goals and the commercial space marketplace. Kathy and Jim are both leaders of the highest caliber, and I'm excited to have them taking us into the next era of space exploration. As some of you know, Jim spent many years supporting NASA programs across several NASA centers. He served as both the Deputy Director and Director of the Glenn Research Center, and after that is Deputy Associate Administrator Technical for Bill Gerstenmaier. More recently, Jim has served as a member of the NASA Advisory Council. He has excellent program and project management skills and offers both NASA and industry experience which will prove valuable as he leads the development of numerous initiatives that will return us to the moon in a sustainable manner. Kathy continually exceeds all expectations, leading her diverse team and achieving program results with extraordinary outcomes. She played a critical role in developing and leading one of our commercial space initiatives for the last decade, establishing a commercial economy on ISS today, commercial cargo and commercial crew. Absolutely amazing. Kathy's proven track record and her credibility with our aerospace and international partners is critical to our success as she continues to lead our high-tempo space operations missions. Now, we're extremely fortunate to have these two distinguished leaders, both of whom who have received numerous awards and recognitions, including the prestigious Presidential Rank Award, lead our human space endeavors. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to folks that you really want to hear from. So, Jim, I'm turning it over to you, and it is great to have you back on board. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I, I'd like to first start by, by thanking the administrator and, and, and Pam and Bob for the opportunity. And uh, I'd like to recognize Kathy for all she's done uh, in her time here in HEO, uh, it has truly been amazing. So thank you for that, Kathy. Um, as, as all of you know, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Um, first, I wanna make sure everyone knows we start with our Artemis missions that we have today. Artemis one, Artemis two that are in the pipeline, Artemis three, not far behind. Um, that's our focus, that's our responsibility. So while we talk about developing things for the out years, our, our focus is near term and executing those missions. But at the same time, we now have the opportunity to continue refining and defining achievable long-term plans, both for the lunar surface and for Mars. What we also have 
in, in the exploration systems development organization is an opportunity to take our approach to development a little bit differently. We can hand it over to operations. We'll finish development, hand it over to operations. It doesn't mean it's operational. But once we hand it off, then we can move on to our, our next thing, our next development. But what's core to this, and, and having been at the agency and honestly uh, found when I left the agency how much I missed the people. And it's all about the people and the people that make it work every day, both in our NASA workforce and in our contractor workforce. Those people, you, will all be involved, including our stakeholders. And also centered, central to that are international and commercial partners as well that will remain a part of all future architecture that we develop. So again, I'd like to thank all of you for the opportunity, thank my family for allowing me to do this as well. And uh, let me turn it over to Kathy. Wow, what an exciting time. You know, um, the other day I think somebody said, this is gonna be so great, you're the dynamic duo. So um, I don't know which one of us is a Batman and Robin, I have a feeling every once in a while we'll be switching back and forth, but um, what that does convey to everybody is we're a team. And it's going to take us together to go do all the things that Bill and Bob and Pam are giving us to go do and to go make it happen. Um, Jim talked about the importance of keeping Artemis 1, 2, and 3 on track. This is also about keeping us flying every day, 365 days a year on station and continue to expand that capability to do the most amazing things that we can do and have us create a commercial LEO destination platform that we can continue to have and check out all the systems we're going to need to, to have to be and maintain a sustainable operations around the moon. So. I can't tell Jim how excited I am to start seeing these things coming over. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am to have a partner here. Uh, I keep thinking two heads are better than one, and, and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. And um, as he and I have said, you know, we're here for our team. Uh, there will be a transition, and we know sometimes it will be hard, but we're here for you. We want to hear from you, and we're going to be there for you to make us work through this transition and keep going on the tasks that Bob and Pam and Bill are giving us to go do. Thank you again. Thank you, Kathy, and to all of our leadership. Now we'll move on to the question and answer session. As a reminder, we've collected questions in advance from the workforce. So thank you to all who have submitted questions. And the first question is for Pam. While we've been preparing for this announcement, we know one of the top questions on everyone's mind is, why now? Why do we reorganize HEO now? So there's a lot of different reasons why the answer is now. Uh, I'll try to pick the ones that I think are most important. The last decade has seen extraordinary change and growth. The impact that NASA has had on commercial space has created new capabilities that we didn't even know we could rely on, but they're going to help us uh, tremendously as we go out into the solar system. And the other thing is there's been a lot of work put together to develop the capabilities that come with SLS, Orion, and EGS, and the work that has started for uh, the next sets of development. This is exactly the time for us to take a deep breath and say, wow, we have a chain of development programs, no longer just one monolithic program. How are we going to manage this huge change in scope? As we prepare to fly Artemis One? this is a really good time uh, to, to take this step. I think we've learned a lot in the last decade, and the future is starting to emerge much more clearly. Uh, this is uh, a change, I think, that's going to help us manage this growth and scope uh, as we step forward with the first Artemis mission. Thank you. And this next question is for Mr. Administrator. How will the agency ensure that moving forward, all parts of the agency's missions, including earth sciences and aeronautics research, do not get left by the wayside? 
Because we're committed to NASA's total mission, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Uh, why in the world would you uh, leave something behind, say, in science? Look how the uh, uh, American people have gotten so charged up uh, as a result of perseverance. And now the little helicopter that's serving far beyond its design life uh, and now is a rover, uh, a scout, uh, instead of just being a technology demonstration. And I could go on and on. Uh, in 23, we have a, uh, a system launched on, on a Falcon Heavy. It's called Viper. It's going to the South Pole. It's going to land by the edge of a big crater there, which we think has a lot of geological promise. And it's looking for water. Because where there's water, there's fuel. And that could well be a gas station for us in the future, for future missions, including the one to Mars. And that's another part of science. Don't forget the planetary science. Look what we are doing. We're going back after 30 years to Venus. Look what we're doing on December the 17th. We're launching a telescope that's going to be a million miles on the side of the Earth away from the sun, and it's going to look out into the heavens, not like Hubble, looking at the array of the sky. It's going to look through a keyhole, and it's going to peer back over 13 billion years of light. It's going to look back to the light at the time shortly after the Big Bang, at the formation of the first galaxies. And of course, I've only scratched the surface as to all the other programs. I mentioned aeronautics. Pam and I are going out and see this needle-nosed X-59 that's still at the Skunk Works uh, that's going to open up commercial air travel where we can fly in half the time from distance a to distance B, and we can fly over populated areas because it's going to be a low sonic boom. Why in the world would we sacrifice all that? We don't want to. We're not. We can do all these things together. And by the way, let me remind you, this is compared to other federal agencies. This is a little agency about a $25 billion uh, agency. But oh, by the way, it's a can-do agency, and it keeps getting voted for the last nine years as the best place to work in the federal government. And because we're a can-do agency, we're going to do all of the above, and we're going to make it happen. And we are now as we, stand on, as we stand on the shoulders of the Apollo generation, we are going to lift up the Artemis generation as we go back to the moon and we go on to Mars. Wow, that's a lot. If it doesn't get you excited, I don't know what does. This next question is for Jim. And it's got a couple of follow-on parts to it. What initiatives will we pursue to ensure that the Exploration Mission Directorate is on the cutting edge of technology development and helps NASA retain the identity as explorers? Will it support have allowing civil servants to hold a percentage of their intellectual property on technology that they develop in order to retain high performers? Will it also support an alternative funding structure that allows them? Okay, about day two, okay. Uh, um, now, so I think uh, to, to the first question, it's um, staying connected to STMD. I think we, we, we have to do that, right? That's STMD's purpose, is to continue that pipeline of technology development. Um, certainly, we'll continue our development of, 
uh, how to help people uh, live in space, how to make systems work better in space. That's ongoing today on ISS. So I think to me that's the, the pipeline that keeps it going. Of course, we'll, on our missions, continue to advance things. There's, there's I think they'll fly in Artemis One that'll do that. As far as the employees keeping IP, and, and maybe this is my dated center director uh, time here, the employees still have the opportunity to, to to be on the patents to get the royalties for the for the long haul. Um, so that that and again day two, I don't think that's changed, but um, that that to me is their their connectivity. And I don't know, Bob, you. Yes. I don't think it's fair to put all of that on Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say, you know, this is something that we're looking at is uh, how do we compensate our uh, civil servants? What is the role of the civil servant in the future? How are we structured as we move into the future? And uh, we're working on that uh, actively to ensure that we retain the best people. And uh, folks need to get credit for what they do. But this is something that we'll work through together. And, uh, we have an awesome uh, human capital organization that will help us uh, get to the right answer, but absolutely. Thank you. And this next question is for Kathy. Kathy, what is the plan for a future NASA's presence in low Earth orbit? So we're really trying to create opportunity. You know, one of the things we're beginning to work on is, and, and actually, got over 10 proposals for a new uh, commercial LEO destination potential. You know, what we've learned is after, obviously we we're working on extending ISS to 2030, um, but, but really the primary, one of the primary reasons for the extension was to give us time to be able to work with companies to be able to establish a low Earth orbit destination that is, will enable us to continue to test the systems that Jim will be developing so that we can, there's no other place that can do 365 days a year and then be able to take you from, you know, this microgravity environment from a human perspective to a, a different gravity field here on Earth and be able to really test those physical, you know, um, protocols that we'll need to develop to be able to go to Mars. And so, you know, one of our goals, and Pam talks about this, is to continue to let industry know here are the things we need so that, that they can be coming up with unique ways to be able to meet those needs and at the same time furthering our goals for exploration. So um, I tell people we're looking for all of your ideas and not only in that area, but in other areas, help us come up with solutions to the problems that we have in low Earth orbit, because I do firmly believe if we come up with solutions there, it helps us as we're going and pursuing our lunar missions and then going out to Mars and, and wherever else Jim is going to take us. Thanks. Thank you. And this next question goes back to Bob. Jim mentioned STMD. How does STMD fit into this new organizational structure? So we are not changing uh, STMD. Uh, the work that Jim Reuter and his team are doing is outstanding, and we absolutely need that as we move forward integrated with uh, exploration. And it's a, it's a feeder organization. STMD is going to continue on with the CLIPS missions. It's going to continue to help develop the technologies that we need to be successful as we go back to the moon in a sustainable way, as we learn what we need to learn on the lunar surface so that we can eventually go on to Mars. So, uh, no, no impact to STMD at this time. We're going to continue to operate as a team. And, you know, I've I got to say, you know, going back to the administrator's uh, earlier answer, I have never seen our agency working together so well, so integrated between all our mission directorates executing our mission. And we all feed into each other. The technologies that we're developing, what we need, it's not like science is going off on their own doing what they want. They're doing what they need to help us be successful with humans. Exploration is going to feed into operations. STMD feeds into... Uh, you know, exploration and operations. So we're, we're totally integrated as we move forward as one. Thank you, sir. That's good to hear. This next question is for Jim and Kathy, and it has to do with EVA. EVA is comprised of a systems of people and hardware. 
much more than just the spacesuit. It integrates the human astronauts with other assets of human spaceflight systems. The EVA system supports both ISS space ops and Artemis exploration missions. How will this reorg clarify the hierarchy and integration of EVA teams ranging from leadership to engineering and operations? Will the number of civil servants to charge their salary to problems or gap areas rather than specific projects in order to allow freedom of development and commercialization pursuits? Go ahead, Kat. <laughs> so I think what's really great, uh, as you become a, and Jim will learn this, and he was a center director, is we got a great team at JSC working this, first of all. And uh, Vanessa and her team and are working and laying out actually a plan to be able to support our strategies for the development of suits, not only for obviously the ISS and being able to, and I think one of the folks don't realize is getting a new suit on ISS actually helps us test out and get ready for a suit on the lunar surface. And so, um, you know, Jim's team obviously will be looking at the utility and requirement sets for a lunar suit because you have to, it's so embedded in, your, in the architecture that you're developing. And obviously we've been working with Vanessa and her EVA team at JSC to make sure that there's a continuum of that capability that allows us to test that capability on the ISS, provide utility with that suit on the ISS, and then move on to supporting um, the development activities and comes back to the future sustaining operations on the moon. So um, Vanessa has laid out an integrated plan to support us and I'm absolutely confident that that team will be ready to go execute on this very, very difficult mission and bring us and to be able to accomplish all the goals that we have going forward. Okay, thank you. There's a lot on in the future. Now let's talk about the deep future or the far future. Jim, this question is for you. We know what we are doing is leading up to the first human land on Mars, but what comes after that and on Mars after humans have landed there? Okay, again, day two, but um, I, I guess what I'd say is the, you keep hearing the word integrated and, and the, the last question, for example, of, of the suits. Everything we're doing, and, and Kathy hit on it before, stuff we're doing today is buying down those long-term risks. So um, what we do after is all gonna be built off of today. So how do we how do, we do the, the transportation to further out in space? How do we get out into the NRHO orbit? How do we think about how we get to Mars, right? Those kind of um, technologies are gonna take us further. How, what do we learn when we're on the lunar surface? Um, that's gonna help us learn what we do when we're on Mars. And then all of that fed back with the human in the loop, right? Mark, Mark just got extended to a year, right? Everything we're learning from the six months missions to the one year missions are buying down the risks that the human research program has given us. So I think we have the, that groundwork tells us where we can go after Mars, but right now, honestly, um, we have the chance to set a defined focused path to Mars. That's really what I want to do before we look too much further beyond it. Let me just tell you, Thomas is always coming up with new places for us to follow. So we're looking for more places where bots first, boots next. <laughs> Okay, and Kathy, back to you for a one final question. What becomes of the HEO Affordability Initiative with this new Mission Directorate reorganization? Hey, Bob told us today, charge forward, I can't tell you. Um, you know, it becomes even more important for us to figure out how to move to sustainable and cost-effective and reliable you know, crew transportation for our exploration systems going forward so we can free up development money for Jim to do the next step. We've got a lot of things. I can see he's got this list going on in his head right now and um, it's gonna be really, really important for us to get to a place where we have to provide reliable and safe crew transportation for our exploration systems, um, but 
it's really, really critical for us to then be able to free up the resources for development. Yeah, and I'd, I'd just like to add, you know, this isn't just a, a HEO initiative as it started off. This is a, a directive from the ninth floor that we have to find a way to become more uh, cost effective and efficient as we move forward with uh, our Artemis architecture. And we had a telecon this morning, both Jim and Kathy were in it. Jim, of course, has the initial job of getting us success on our initial Artemis missions. But just as we have restructured contracts on the shuttle on the International Space Station, we have to move to a uh, more sustainable model as we come out of the development phase. And uh, Jim said it earlier, you know, there's a difference between being operational and operations. You know, it's never going to be truly operational is what we think about, you know, you just get in and go and you don't, you know, you kick the tires and go. That's not going to ever be the case with the systems that we fly. They are going to require extreme diligence by the team regardless of how the contract is structured so that we ensure that we are doing things in the absolute safest way that we understand the risk and we're going to be constantly learning on every flight and making modifications just as we did throughout the shuttle program. But that doesn't mean we can't get to a more effective uh, contract structure as we move forward. Thank you. And we have time for just one final question. This is for the administrator and Pam. I was just, uh, people were curious on what kind of timeline we can expect for organizational changes to cascade throughout NASA based on these new directives. Well, we are starting right now. And uh, there will be an implementation over time, uh, naturally. Uh, and uh, we're going to feel that along as we go. But uh, this new... Uh, two directorate starts as of today. So what we understand is, uh, you know, what we're hearing from CFO and uh, Chico is uh, 90 to 120 days is normal for uh, an effort like this. Um, I think it's just important to understand that we're not in a big rush to change things. We have a lot of really important things happening and we have to keep our eye on the ball and that's what we're asking you keep doing what you're doing because you're doing really well and it's very very important that we take it one step at a time and we don't drop the ball anywhere along the way so we will take all the time we need to make the transition happen smoothly and safely Thank you. And that will conclude our question and answer session. I'd like to thank the NASA workforce for all of your questions. Just know that there's going to be many more opportunities to discuss this with leadership in the next coming days, weeks, and even months. And for our speakers, are there any final thoughts that you would like to share with the workforce? And we'll start with Kathy. I thought I, I, thought I had about four people's worth of comments to think of something. Um, I want to thank the team that has supported me for the last 15 months. I really, really, really appreciate everybody. But I also want to just make underscore that I'm really excited about working with Jim. And I know Jim and I will, you know, be working with all of you and appreciate all your support as we're working through this. It is a very exciting time for us and uh, we're going to need lots of help along the way. Thank you. It wasn't, wasn't uh, quite as easy. Uh, last the last time. Um, no, it, it's, uh, you know, it is, I mentioned it's a great honor. Kathy, and I, I see our job is to communicate with you where we're at with the reorganization, what we're doing, what the timeline is. There are fixed things we have to go through. Uh, we'll work through those, but we'll communicate every step of the way. Pam said it, stay focused on your jobs today. Um, especially those folks, you know, working with the, the crew in orbit and those folks working on Artemis 1 as we push those real critical milestones. I am just so excited about our future and, uh, and the team that we have in place to uh, make that future a reality. Uh, Jim said it earlier, uh, coming back to NASA, it, it's all about the people. We have the most amazing workforce anywhere. I've had the privilege of working with some pretty amazing teams 
in the Marine Corps as a test pilot and here at NASA, but NASA, NASA's top. NASA is a step above everybody else. The quality of our workforce in what you accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis, it, it's phenomenal. And I, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm just so honored and proud to be part of this team. We are going to charge forward into the future. We are going to be successful, and it's going to be because of all of you. Thank you. I'd just like to say that uh, the question about the future and what happens after 2040 resonated with me because I'm spending a lot of my time thinking about that too. And uh, in particular, uh, we haven't talked about it today, but the massive existential threat that climate change offers us and the critical role that aeronautics is going to play in reducing emissions for the future to reach the targets for 2050. And in addition, our planetary science and our earth science, uh, looking at the earth and understanding and providing the information that we need uh, to make the decisions that are essential. Uh, that's a lot. We're talking about humanity going out into the solar system and saving the earth. And I couldn't be more proud of the team and uh, to be here. And I want to thank you for the work that you're doing every day that's going to take us there. It's a truth that you should really like and love what you're doing. It's not work. And I think that's very applicable to the people of NASA. Uh, and that's why we're such an amazing team, an amazing family. I want to thank you also because 90% of NASA civil servants are double vaccinated. And this plague of COVID that we've been through, uh, it has held us up. Uh, it has caused a financial and it has caused a personal toll on some of our NASA family members. Uh, it has indeed caused the untimely death of a number of our NASA family members. So I want you all, uh, please, to seriously consider, if you have not been vaccinated, do it for everybody else. Of course, you'll be doing it for yourself. But do it for NASA and do it for our country. And God bless you. NASA leadership will discuss this exciting development for human spaceflight with members of the media today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That teleconference will be streamed live for all to listen in. And thank you all for being here today. I am certainly excited and motivated for the future of human exploration. And I was going to say get back to work, but after the administrator uh, pointed it out, let's all get back to doing what we love. Thank you. Good job, man.